After a long delay, the Batman 89 comic is back. We're here to analyze issue five before the release of issue six. Let's start with the cover. In a tweet, Joe Quinone said that he, quote, had to include all my favorite cats in my life. From left to right, there's Biggs, Miss Kitty from the movie, the ears of Finty, Maui, and Knives. In this issue, some of the Joker's gang join Two-Face. One of them spots a shirt with the original Jerry Robinson Joker design. You can also see that one of the men working for Two-Face is Lawrence, the Joker henchman who wielded the boombox in the museum. Lawrence, played by George Lane Cooper, was last seen trying to jump Batman, who is actually movement double Carl Newman. Check out that interview if you haven't already. The novelization, which we covered this past week, mentions that he crashed through but got knocked out on the platform below, explaining how he survived. Lawrence is alive enough to play music during Two-Face's attack, which, from the lyrics, is NWA's Fuck the Police. Commissioner Gordon visits Barbara, dressed like he did in the 89 movie with the scarf and the black hat, and Barbara appears to have a heavy bag in her apartment, further hinting at a possible future as Batgirl. One panel shows the outside of the GCPD building, modeled after the drawings by Nigel Phelps for Anton First, as we covered in our Batman 89 concept art episode. This overhead shot of Two-Face personally reminded me of this art from the comic Prodigal. We then go to the Batcave where Alfred is at the Bat computer, which looks like the one from 89, while the desk that Alfred moves to is closer to the ones in Batman Returns. It also looks like Batman gave his grapnel launcher from Batman Returns to Drake Winston. We then get a full look at Robin's updated suit with similar ab armor to Batman's from Batman Returns. A couple other shots replicate comic panels like Batman in the Shadows from Year One. And Batman gliding with Commissioner Gordon is reminiscent of the cover of the first Batman comic, Detective Comics number 27. Gordon does end up with a dart in his neck similar to the ones in The Dark Knight Rises, though these could also tie into the drugged black ninja wheels that Batman used on Dick Grayson in the 1986 Batman draft by Sam Hamm. Two-Face ends up using the remote control battering from Batman Returns, as planted in issue 2, while Robin replicates a move from the BTAS episode Robin's Reckoning, itself paying homage to Akira. We then get a look at Catwoman's hideout which has a ton of easter eggs, the mask being reminiscent of the 1966 Catwoman mask, the Hell Here sign carrying over from the one in the movie, the head of the giant rubber duck that Penguin used in the movie, a clock with a Shrek cat on it, a pig that looks like Danny DeVito's Penguin, and the stun gun that Selina used to kill Max Shrek. We get another look at the Batcave which has the door of the costume vault from Batman Returns. And at the very end, Two-Face shoots Gordon who appears to succumb to his wounds. Is this the end of Gordon, or are they doing the Batman 89 universe version of Officer Down? We'll find out. In the meantime, here are a few other things that we missed in past episodes. Joe Quinones brought up that the cover of issue 4 is actually an homage to Detective Comics number 38, the first Robin story. Don't know how I missed that. Also, the Superman 78 comic has shown Bruce Wayne as well as mentioned Batman in a headline, which prompted Screen Rant to insist that Batman 89 and Superman 78 were in the same universe, with three total articles on this. However, the artist on Superman 78, Wilfredo Torres, debunked this, saying, quote, Speaking only for myself, if you're speculating about whether or not Superman 78 and Batman 89 share continuity, I'd say no. Burton had a Superman, and it was Nicolas Cage. So there you go. He then said, Yeah, I hadn't given the casting much thought when I drew that page, so I did a mashup of Adam West and Michael Keaton. In a later tweet, he said that, quote, My casting for Donner vs. Batman would be Warren Beatty. In the meantime, I think many Burton fans would agree with Mr. Torres that the Clark Kent in Burton's world should be this guy. Lastly, here's a pic of Joe Quinones' early sketches of Robin and Two-Face done in the style of Tim Burton's concept art that we showed in the Batman 85 treatment episode. Big thanks to my research assistant Dan for helping to put together a lot of the visuals for this episode. Also big thanks, of course, to Joe Quinones and Sam Hamm for their kind words on these analyses. Hope to have you both on our show very soon. And if you want to check out an alternate fan-made comic set in the Burtonverse, check out our friends at Batman Enigma. Until then, I'm Ben Juan, and if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and as usual, do us a favor, tell all your friends about us.